Okay, everybody, so from sports to entertainment this morning. Okay, so I'm so excited to share this story with all of you. So before there was Oprah, before there was Arsenio Hall, there was a gentleman by the name of Ellis Hazlip. He was America's first black nighttime talk show host and the producer of the groundbreaking variety show, Soul. The landmark program and host are the subjects of a brand new documentary feature film called Mr. Soul in virtual theaters next Friday, August 28th. Let's take a look. Live and in color from New York City, Soul. I'm Ellis Hazlip, producer of Soul, and we are happy to have you with us this evening. Ellis was a gardener, and he cultivated all of these people. Black voices speaking to the problems of our time. Ellis said, if we're going to do something for the black community, it's got to be a lot deeper, jazzier, even more controversial. Joining us now via Skype from New York is the director of Mr. Soul, Melissa Hazlip. Melissa Hazlip, good morning to you. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning. It's great to see you, Melvin. Gosh, so I'm, I was just so excited. I've been looking forward to this, to chatting with you for the past couple of weeks since I knew you were going to come on. So this show was described as the first Black Tonight Show. So tell us more about your inspiration and about this landmark program. This was an amazing show. Some people say it's like the greatest show you've never heard of. But actually, it was really important for the time because nothing had been seen like this on television. Imagine this is just a few months after Martin Luther King Jr. had been assassinated. And so we needed to reimagine ourselves on this American landscape. We needed to change up the, men's, the landscape. And so Soul brought black culture, black love, black intellect, black arts, poetry, dance, music, all of this to television for the first time right in people's living rooms. I, I love George Faison, the great George Faison on that clip, and he said that Ellis was like a gardener, you know, and, and he watered. And so with that, he gave so many people their, their first uh, appearances on this show. How did, I mean, like Earth, Wind & Fire, Al Green, so many peeps. When you were combing through that archival footage, how did you decide uh, what you were going to put in the film? Well, that was the hardest decision. It's a gold mine because you're seeing people in their prime and they're so innocent and so excited to be on television. And it's also there's this this energy that comes from a hunger to want to be free to express yourself in a way that people haven't really perceived you before. And so what we tried to do was show a full spectrum of the black experience, dance, music, art, poetry, activism, LGBTQ folks, everybody needed to have a voice. And so we sort of strung it together, the five years of soul from 1968 to 1973. And we tried to find the most salient moments, both in our culture, in music and art and politics, and whatever illustrated that moment in time. And of course, all of our favorite hits from Al Green to Earth, Wind & Fire, Nikki Giovanni, James Baldwin. It's really a love letter to black culture. You know, the, the power of, of this moment, I mean, for, for me, being a, a black broadcaster and truly standing on the shoulders of your uncle, because Ellis was your uncle and he was a pioneer as an openly gay man. I'm a gay, you know, a gay man. And so being able to authentically stand in your power and, and to be yourself, and he was also a feminist, you know, and um, he really wanted to show the soul of, of, of the black person and all the dynamics at a time when there was so much emphasis and focus on you know, not presenting black folks in the best light. Absolutely. And to speak to your point, I think Ellis understood that sexuality is fluid. And he also recognized the whole spectrum of expression, same gender loving men and women, as well as folks who were just doing their thing and expressing themselves. And I think that was what was the key. That Ellis saw the truth of black people and he wanted to share that truth without any apology. So it was really unapologetically black. Did you feel a sense of, uh, I guess, more enormous pressure because this was a family affair and because this is your uncle and you were telling his story? There was a little bit of pressure. <laughs> yeah. I think more importantly, it's the story of our culture. You know, black history is American history. Black history is now. And we are all standing on the shoulders of giants in many ways. And so the impetus to get this right 
was really what fueled us. That this, we are, especially right now in the moment that we're in, we are on the eve of a great racial reckoning. And it's important to show that black excellence has always been there. Mm -hmm. And I think Ellen Hazlett recognized that. And so, you know, it's not just a hashtag now, but it's to look back at this incredible archive and see people pushing the movement forward. That's what's happening now. And Ellis was a curator. He was an Afrofuturist. He was a curator of the culture. And that's why it's so exciting to bring this story out right now in the midst of this uh, pandemic and also this social movement that we're in, to show that Black people have a place and a voice. And we are part of what the future will be, as just as we always have been. Absolutely. One of my favorite uh, proverbs is, I am because we are. And um, thank you very much. I feel very honored to talk to you and to be standing on the shoulders of Ellis doing this work. And I'm sure he would be happy for you, too, because you are the legacy of Soul. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Soul, everybody, releases virtually on August 28th. To purchase tickets and to support theater, visit MrSoulMovie.com. We'll be back.